Mexico, alien bodies presented to Congress. At a UFO hearing in Mexico, lawmakers have been shown what are claimed to be the corpses of mummified aliens. Today, Mexico's Congress heard testimony on UFOs and the prospect of alien life. And that hearing started with what was a huge surprise. Here we go again. I know some of you are thinking, they expect to fool us with this fake tiny aliens found in Peru years ago with non-human DNA kept in secret to release to the public. Now, y'all know this is a setup, right? For the big show when the real deception is front and center on the world stage. This is in the Bible. And the Bible even shares a time span in which this happens. Going to get to that because folks have been falling for this. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you really need to see this so that your faith won't be shaken. If we're around to see this, if you're not saved, you need to see this, too. Going to point you straight to the cross. We've seen all of the movies with this sort of content with aliens, along with recent claims to keep the topic fresh. It's all like this Economist Occult Magazine center page. See all of the distractions? Then look way up top where there's a film crew capturing the war in the heavens. Where have we seen this? Revelation chapter 12. Never mind the spaceships because we don't really know what this will look like in verse seven. Revelation 12, verse seven, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels. Before this future war in the heavens, we see the symbology of the rapture in verse five. But every time I look at this passage, it's verse four that gives me pause. This part right here in his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Whatever that event is, as I've said before, it appears to be an act of deception by Satan, the dragon, casting or sending those third of the fallen angels down to the earth to do what? Whatever that looks like, again, we see the rapture in verse five and then a war in the heavens as a response in verse seven. All of this captured within a time span that's after the wonders in the heavens in verses one and two. And we've had that on the Feast of Trumpets in the year of 2017. Same wonders that the prophet Joel warned of in Joel chapter two, which occurs before the great and terrible day of the Lord come to warn the world that Israel's 70th week is approaching and that there is a multipolar world power soon to rise and Satan is in possession of it. We're in that time span now. The Bible warns us of a strong delusion in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's pick it up at verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. See that? Those of you that are saved are not only saved from the penalty of sin, which is death, but we're going to be saved from this strong delusion coming up. The debate is whether this alien peace is part of it. In closing, I want to remind us of Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. These 
fake aliens are representations of the spiritual wickedness in high places. By definition, the high places is an actual place. It's not the elite within society. It's not a status in the world. It's an actual place. Look at where this is. The word high in this text is Strong's Concordance G2032, Eporanios. The Strong's definitions say above the sky, celestial, in heaven, heavenly, high. The Thayer lexicon says existing in heaven, things that take place in heaven, the heavenly regions, heaven itself, the abode of God and angels, the lower heavens of the stars, the heavens of the clouds, the heavenly temple or sanctuary, and then of heavenly origin or nature. See? The spiritual wickedness in high places aren't in the third heaven where the abode of God and the angels are because they're wicked. So we know they aren't there. It's the lower two heavens of the stars and the heavens of the clouds, the atmosphere of Earth. That's where they are now. But when they lose that future war in the heavens, it'll be game over, stranded upon the Earth. It'll be crazy. No doubt that they will deceive folks with their loss as we see Satan worshiped in Revelation chapter 13, verse four, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. So whatever it looks like when Satan sends those fallen angels down to the earth, it'll be a deception and it will be planned. Just saying, don't fall for it. Whether it's an alien encounter, first contact, alien invasion, whatever the media spin is on this, don't believe it. Look at the word of God. What folks may see and hear may be convincing, but the word of God sets it straight and it's full of truth. This is not so that we will be in fear. It is to encourage faith, faith in Jesus Christ. It is to encourage us to repentance and toward salvation through Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1 and 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the richness of his grace. 2 Peter 3 and 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Today is the day of salvation. You can be prepared to meet God right now. You must believe in your heart that Jesus died for you on that cross. For we have all sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. For we all have a sin debt that we cannot pay. The wages of sin is death, right? So we must trust in what Jesus did for us up on that cross. We must believe it with our hearts and confess it with our mouths. Jesus was buried and on the third day, God raised him up. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away Behold, all things are become new. So just come as you are. Look at this, Titus 3, verses 3 through 7. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared 
not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. All right, I will leave it right there. We must use our remaining time wisely. Amen. Live holy before the Lord. Love y'all. Shalom.